We are going to learn about Flexbox more. We've already learned about it some, but so now we're going to officially start studying it. And if you're wanting to watch uh, all these videos, you can find my videos on the front end, HTML, CSS, website front end, YouTube Greater Commons. You can find my videos on uh, website back end at YouTube Todd McLeod. And, uh, and then you should also check out github.com, goes to 11. We're working out the HTML, CSS, Bootcamp repo, that's what it's called. And follow me on Twitter because I'm always tweeting about web development, front end and back end. And last thing, <laughs> a whole lot of stuff, is check out greatercommons.com. It's a website I'm building with some friends. It'll be launching soon. Just sign up. But uh, it's all for the greater good of humanity, helping people learn stuff and learn skills to get employment and teach others and all that stuff. It's great. Um, so now we're going to look at layout with Flexbox. And really the resource that I like the most for learning Flexbox is CSS Tricks Flexbox. And this has a great sort of uh, way to, I don't know, it just shows you like what you need to know to uh, use Flexbox. And I also want to show you what we're going to see here is Flexbox Froggy. So Flexbox Froggy is a video game you can play. And uh, <clears throat> you have to get the frog over to the lily, wherever it's at. And so welcome to Flexbox Froggy, Froggy, a game where you help Froggy and friends by writing CSS code. Guide this frog to the lily pad on the right by using justify content property. Justify content uh, uh, flex end. Uh, flex start, start in. What is it? Justify content flex end. Yeah, flex end. There we go. So I moved them over. And so you, you, know, you go through all these and you have to, we'll get to that at the end. Okay playing this game and then you guys can play it and get all the way through it and that'll be one of your homeworks. So Flexbox, you already know you have a parent which is a container and then anything that is a child of that is an item. And so let me give you an example. So we're working in that HTML CSS bootcamp 031 Flexbox and we're going to look at the container. So here are examples of containers. And so here we have this and that and split vertically and then bring it down and I guess I want that out but just bring it over a little there we go so here's our HTML and our CSS and we have a header with two divs the div width 50 height 50 background color yellow yellow border two pixels cool the header has a border one pix solid red and the header is display flex and justify content space between. And so this header is a flex container because we put display flex on it. And that makes each of these guys descendants, their children of the header, and they become flex items. Because the parent is a flex container, those become flex items. And so when we say justify content space between, that's going to apply to those items. And so we get something like this, which is pretty cool. Right? Space between. And so if you look at this guide here, properties for the parents, display flex makes it a flex container. And then we could set the flex direction. And here, flex direction by default is row. And by default, flex wrap is no wrap. And so you can see those defaults right here just being mentioned by being commented out. And so a row means, hey, these are going to go in a row, horizontal. And, uh, and no wrap means don't wrap them onto the next line. Just keep squishing them onto this line if you run out of room. So these are the defaults. And then we have justify content. Justify content is always going to operate on the primary axes. Flex flows, shorthand notation, by the way, for uh, flex wrap and uh, flex direction. So you can use flex flow if you want shorthand. So justify content. Always going to operate on the primary axes. So if the primary axis is a row, justify content does things along the horizontal, along the row. It'll move things over to the left of the row, over to the right of the row, in the center, space between, space around. So what justify content does, always the primary axis. If our flex direction had been column, so flex direction is column, primary axis is now vertical. And justify content operates on the primary axes, so it will now format vertically. Flex start up at the top, flex end down at the bottom, 
right? So justify content always operates on the primary axes. And flex direction sets the primary axes. Row or column, that becomes the primary axes. Align items does the same thing as justify content, but on the cross axes. So if my primary axis is row, if justify content's row, my primary axis is row horizontal, then my cross axis is vertical, and align items is going to change things along the vertical. You have to remember justify content primary axes, align items cross axes. And that's it, that's Flexbox. So what would happen if I change this from flex direction row to flex direction column? What would you expect to see? What is the primary axis now? Vertical. Vertical. And what does justify content operate on? Primary axis. Primary axis. And what do you think you're going to see? I'm not totally certain what we're going to see. I would know what we were going to see if I set the height, but now I'm wondering, is this going to you know, just, just be right at the top in two stacked boxes because we didn't give it a height? I think that's what we're going to see. That's what we saw. But what would happen if we gave this a height? 100 viewport height. There we go. Cool. Let's see another one. So here we have a bunch of divs. Width, height, background color, and border for each of the divs. Display flex, flex direction row, flex wrap, wrap. So they wrap. No wrap. They don't wrap. What happens if we have a lot of them? All wrapping, no wrap, squished in on the same row. Body is the flex container. All the divs are flex items. We have display flex, flex direction row, flex wrap, wrap. What's the default for flex wrap? No wrap. Okay, so by default, it's no wrap. What's the default for flex direction? Steve? It's row. Okay. Flex direction default is row. So for each flex item, we now have flex grow, one, width, height, margin, border, background, color, text align. So flex grow is a flex item property. So how much does it grow in relation to the other ones? So if this was... I might have to do a little bit more explaining here. You see that? What happens if flex grow isn't there? So we're telling the item grow, baby. You got the space filled in. And you know, how much do you grow? You grow in proportion to anything else on the line, one to one. So if this one was like flex grow two, then it would grow twice as much as this one. So that is 16.
grew twice as much as the other one. Two to one. Three to one. That's so cool. Now it's just grown one to one. Isn't that nice? So wrap, no wrap. Let's look at these examples. So this one's got wrap. This one's got no wrap. We've already seen this. <laughs> Wee! Wrap reversed. <laughs> That's wrap reverse. So you could reverse stuff. CSS right here. Wrap reverse. Kind of reverses things. Flex direction row. Puts them all in a row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 through 16. Row reverse. 1, 2, 3, 4. Reverses things. Reverses the order. We have column, 1 through 16, and column reverse, 16 through 1. Interesting. Change in the direction of your items. Flex flow is just the shorthand property. Row wrap. Okay. Instead of doing this and that, you can just do flex flow, row wrap. Justify content, flex start with a row, flex start with a row, flex start with a column, flex in with a row, flex end with a column, center, and this stuff's all going to be the same deal, right? Just center, space between, space around. So it's just going to give us pictures like this. Like start, flex in, center, space between, space around. Align items just works on the cross axes. So rows the primary axes, line items be the cross axes. Row, line items is cross axes, vertical in this case. And then we have align content. So there's flex start of content. Here's flex end. Kind of got squished. So line content does all the rows. Line content. And we have item properties. Align self, order, flex, grow, flex, shrink, flex, spaces. We'll look at these in a second. I think you have enough now to uh, start on Flexbox Froggy. So why don't you do Flexbox Froggy until you can't get it anymore, until it asks you to do like flex item properties, and then we'll do flex item, okay?